Hey, this is Rob, and this is for my digital fabrication students. Uh, basically, I just want to show you how you might make a form of some kind for this project one where we're making a mold using the CNC milling machine, um, casting silicone into that to make a rubber mold, and then casting a variety of materials on your own into that mold. So uh, I'm just going to show you basically how you could make something like this. I don't want you to make this, obviously make whatever you want, but uh, I just wanted to give you um, <clears throat> an example so that you could kind of get an idea of how some features are created using Fusion 360. So I'll just start a new design. And I started this from a sketch. I'm going to create a sketch. Of course, you could start it from something like a box and then start carving away from it, but I really do think sketches are the best way to go. I'll make it on this top plane. And I'm going to start out by just creating a center rectangle. So that means I'm starting in the middle and then just making it any size I want. Um, I do want my units to be millimeters. So I'll hit millimeters here. Now when I start making dimensions, they'll end up being in millimeters by default. <clears throat> I'll make this 40 millimeters. You can make your object whatever size you want, but uh, I'd probably stick to somewhere between an inch and two inches, so 25 millimeters, maybe 50 millimeters, but that's on the large side, mainly because it takes a long time to mill these things, and um, I think it's worth uh, keeping it really simple and just focusing on getting an object that you can cast uh, different materials into. So um, I am going to add a couple more details, but before I do, I just want to show you something that we talked about in class. So you want a model to be constrained, fully constrained ideally, a, a sketch, sorry, you want a sketch to be fully constrained ideally. So what that means is that um, if I were to try and, I'll hit escape, and if I try and move something around, um, it's kind of, it's, it's already not possible. Uh, I can't, I can't resize this rectangle, and that's because it's fully constrained at the moment. So um, it did that pretty quickly and mostly by itself. So by making a center rectangle, it added this, uh, you can see the red dot in the middle, that's the center point, the, uh, the origin for the axes. But then there's a, a circle around it, and that circle is this concentric um, constraint. So the rectangle, just because I chose a center point rectangle, it automatically added that concentric um, constraint, and so that means it's, it's always going to be centered on that, on that space. I could click on any of these constraints and delete them. They give me more freedom, but right now this is actually perfect. This one is uh, another constraint that it added automatically, coincident, so that center point of the rectangle is coincident with the center point, uh, the origin. <clears throat> this is a uh, right angle, basically, the perpendicular constraint. So it says this has to be perpendicular to that. These are parallel to each other because of these equal signs. Those are parallel to each other. And this says that it's a horizontal line. So given those constraints, it can't be anything other than a square. And um, then the uh, it, that's centered over the, the center point. And then um, by adding the dimensions, my two dimensions, I've made it so that it's fully constrained. Now if I remove one of these uh, constraints, like a dimension, I could resize this all of a sudden. And um, <clears throat> By you know that concentric constraint means that it's automatically kind of pulling on both sides. Uh, if I made a different kind of rectangle, it wouldn't be doing that. But I'm going to just add that back. I'll add this constraint again. Oh, that's weird. Just want to click here, and I'll add that back at 40. <clears throat> and so this is what I'm going to start with. I'm also going to make a line for that uh, ledge. I'll just look back. There's a ledge here. So uh, I'm going to add that ledge now. And you can see it added some more constraints for me because of the way I drew it. And um, I don't know, I think probably it's, it's not quite far enough over, but instead of dragging it over, I could put a dimension here and say the distance between here and here is supposed to be um, 18. Uh, I don't know what it was in the other one. Let's make it 16. So that's basically it for now. I'm going to hit stop sketch and uh, I go back to the home orientation. That's a good place to start pressing and pulling. So I'll click on both of these profiles and I'll just pull them up uh, to be eight millimeters. I'll hit OK. And then uh, it disabled or hid that sketch that I was drawing with because it thought I was done with it. But actually I want to take this, this side of the sketch, this profile, and pull it up further. So um, to do that, I could just... Uh, press pull again, but you see it wants to select either that face or that face. It's hard to get behind it. I suppose I could 
flip this thing over. I could also uh, hide the body, and now I could get to it really easily. But another way to do it that you have to do often is just hold down the mouse button, and then you can see that you can access things that are behind it. So that's actually the face on the bottom of the box. That's the face in front, and there's the profile. So I'll do that. And uh, so eight millimeters is where it was. I'll add another three millimeters, so it's 11. You can see that by default it wants to, it thinks I want to cut that previous one. But really what I want to do is um, just add on to this body that I've already got. So I'm going to do join, and this new thing that I'm doing is going to become a part of that uh, body. Okay, uh, if I look back at the other one, I need to make this kind of domed ceiling to the, uh, to the big part here. And the easiest way to do that, I think, is to create a sketch on this surface. And I will make a three-point arc from there to there and like that. I'll hit stop sketch and I can press pull again. I'll click that new profile that I just made and just drag it over. Um, I'm not sure what, okay, there we go. Um, so I could just drag it over 40 millimeters because I know that's the width of this thing, but if I didn't know the width or um, even if I put 40 millimeters, what happens if I later make this thing bigger? Uh, it, it should actually be correct still, but really what I want to do is not give it a number. I want to just say make it go all the way to the end. So I changed from distance to two, and then I just clicked on a face and, and it uh, will always be the right distance. The last part was these uh, holes, these indents. <clears throat> and so I'll add those by going to uh, create a sketch right on that surface again. And I will make a circle here. You can see it wants to snap to the midpoint, and that triangle means that it's the midpoint. How do I know that? It's right here, midpoint. So it'll add that midpoint constraint if I start here. So um, I'll make this, uh, let's make it 10 millimeters. And then what I can do, instead of drawing several of them, I can just use a rectangular pattern, click on that uh, circle that I just made, and tell it that I want six of them, or five of them, in this direction. What's the distance? It's actually going to be the distance of my whole thing because of the way I've got it here. You can also instead say how far apart each of them is, but I'm going to put in 40 millimeters. And so that's it. it, it um, obviously having five of them is too much, but maybe four. Uh, so I'll hit OK and stop sketch. And now I can just go to press pull and click all of those profiles and pull them down two millimeters. And I do want cut, right? I want to cut into the body. So there we go. Now, if you look at my other one, I have uh, just kind of a angled rim here. That's just a chamfer. So I can add that using modify chamfer and uh, select all the edges that I care about. Well, I think if I uncheck tangent chain, maybe it'll allow me to select more of them. Oh, I have to hold down command. So I'm holding down command. Now I can select all of them. Obviously, I do want it to be two millimeters so that it meets at the bottom, but you know, if I did only one, you can see it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, so I do want two because that's the depth of my uh, things, but obviously they're, they're too big because they're running into each other. I'll hit OK though, and all I have to do is go back and edit my sketch. Now, instead of, uh, if I wanted to change this to less, I, you see this little rectangle glyph here, you can double click on it and change the rectangular pattern. So I could say there should be five instead, or there should be three instead. So um, you can still edit the pattern, but if I just change the dimension here, let's say I make it seven, all of them will change because they're all part of this rectangular pattern. That looks better. I think I'm there almost. So. Uh, the only difference now is if I look at it from the front or the right, um, it should it shows that the these are really vertical, they're just vertical walls. And I've said before that we have a bit of a problem, and this is the problem. Uh, if we are doing a relatively short vertical wall, it's not a big deal, but as soon as it becomes a tall vertical wall, taller than the uh, distance of this um, end mill, then it'll bash into it where it gets wider. So what do we do? We add a bit of a draft. Uh, this also has another effect of basically making this easier to pull out my final uh, cast from the mold because if the walls are kind of slightly angled, that makes it easier to come out. So um, the the way that we can tell if we have a draft is that we can go to inspect and turn on draft analysis. 
and if I select this body and I have to choose a direction so this is the direction that I would be pouring from maybe in the mold so I can just choose the bottom face you can see all these blue places are fine they won't have a problem but the red ones it's saying that because I have it set up for two degrees it's saying that those are don't have my two degree um, the two degree draft that I would like to have so uh, the way that I can uh, fix that is to just add a draft so I will go to modify draft and the plane is again where you're going to pour from so I'll just select the bottom and then um, faces I just need to choose the faces and I think I can hold down command and that allows me to select more of them so I've got three so far you can see there and then there are two more so I'll click there and there uh, so I've got five selected and if we look at it from the front or the right, you can see now they're already angled in because it says negative two. If that was wrong, I could put positive two or I can just hit flip and it'll fix it. So I'll hit okay and now you can see there are no red spots. The, the blue means it's perfectly fine. The uh, lighter shade of blue, the turquoise, means that it's, it's close. It's two degrees as we said, but um, if I had uh, if I only had a one degree draft here, it would be orange or uh, at some point it'll turn red because it's totally uh, not matching the, the draft that I set up. So um, the, the other thing that this would show is if we had an actual undercut. So obviously here, there, this is okay. That's not so great, but you can see that the end mill is tall enough to make it, so it's not a problem. But a really tall one like this, we really should have a draft of some kind there. But here, these are undercuts that's totally unaccept unacceptable because the end mill can only come down. It can't come at an angle, so it wouldn't be able to cut something like this or like this or this, this feature on the right. So that's what we're trying to avoid. Um, two degrees is a decent uh, draft to do, and uh, I think that's it. This is all good, ready to go, and I'll use this in the next step where I'll show you how to make an actual mold from it.